Not a day goes by without some pious pontificator lecturing the rest of us about white male privilege. You know, that's the go-to phrase to signify to the world just how virtuous you are. The thing is, the people who most use this racist, sexist and judgmental phrase about others are often the greatest hypocrites. To use white male privilege as an argument, you need to have the authority of green lefty privilege, or GLP. Now, GLP comes in many forms, and it's based on identifying yourself as part of the lefty tribe, based on identity, extreme environmentalism, or simply not liking Donald Trump. GLP allows you to say racist, sexist, hate-filled and antisocial things without significant personal or professional consequence. If you want to outrageously diss our Anzac tradition, then simply claim GLP and you'll probably get an Arts Council grant. With GLP, you can even take private jets around the world while lecturing others on the evils of using fossil fuels. But without it, using facts rather than emotions, particularly in regard to the left sacred cows, will earn you their wrath. Now, I could go on and on and on, whether it's excusing the depraved elite, defending corruption, rampant hypocrisy, or simply being a total tool. <laughs> GLP gives you a leave pass the rest of us don't have. Now, those with GLP are simply projecting their personal insecurity, their lack of lucidity and their hateful intent in our direction. They are, in short, what they condemn, and it's time they were exposed for the hypocrites they are. Well, Sarah, I guess you've got something to say about this. Well, Corey, I mean, I just think that we're in danger here of getting into the privilege wars, that we're going to get into a bit of a stoush of, uh, well, you know, you've got more privilege than me. No, no, you've got more That's privilege than me. Got. I'm the victim. I'm the victim. But the starting point for that surely has to be, first of all, acknowledging that each and every one of us has a little bit of privilege. I mean, as a white woman, of course I have more privilege than certain sections of the community. Would you not agree, as a starting point for this conversation, not to disagree with much of what you said, but as a starting point, do you not, as an Australian white male, agree that you have enjoyed a certain privilege most of your life that the people that you criticise there, many of them haven't? Sarah, the greatest privilege I have is being an Australian citizen, something we all share mm -hmm. and is open to every Australian and the opportunities that come along. If you're telling me I've got more opportunities or more privilege than you do because of, uh, I happen to be a male, uh, I disagree with that. If you're suggesting to me that uh, someone else, because they've got different colour skin to me, has less opportunities than me, I disagree with that. But, but you would because you're looking at it through one prism. Or oh, through white male privilege. Coming from only someone who, what, who agrees that GLP is somehow giving you a privileged position. But what I'm saying is, is that if we get into this stoush about privilege, everyone's got a little bit of privilege and some of us have more of it than others. OK, well, here's someone who's had white male privilege, green lefty privilege and had it turned against them. Catherine, that's you. What do you have to say? God, you're bowling into my areas tonight, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what do I do with that? Yes, look, I, I, obviously I think it's probably well known amongst the audience. I, I lived as a male until I was 56, so I had, a, and I, you know, a lot of it's just subconscious. You just live the life that's put in front of you. I had a great education. I was very fortunate to have a loving family and good schooling. Gave me a great head start in life, and I'm constantly reminded that of that by the sort of people you're talking about. A lot of the instances you've referred to, incidentally, were people behaving appallingly on social media, and I agree with you on that. The tribal nature of politics around identity now has become toxic, and you either have to subscribe to the entire package. I'm supposed to be a left-winger because I'm transgendered. I found that out to my chagrin in 2016 when, as a serving military officer, I had a few problems with Ros Ward, the head of Marxism Today and Socialist Alternative, and they've just had a great little gab fest this week asking whether the police are necessary, which would come as news to people who've been in bushfire zones in the last few weeks. Let's abolish the police and then what next? So I, I've had all kinds of problems from both ends of the political spectrum. I'm constantly reminded how much male privilege I still have from gender-critical feminists, and I'm also reminded that I'm a total tool by the, uh, <laughs> the green left that you've just um, just brought into play. So I can't please anyone. But I, I think there's great weight to your point, you're, frankly. You're messing with their minds. That's what I think is... Well, by, I, I by making up my own mind, that's the problem. <laughs> well, if that's you it. don't belong to a toxic, conformist little ghetto now, you end up isolated. Yeah. It's very hard to steer your own course in this country, especially on social media, which is why I've deactivated all my accounts. And, and look, when we talk about white male privilege, if we leave the male bit out for a second, just mm. look at white privilege, because that's 
seems to have been here, we all are white, and so, I mean, how... You know, if you ask certain people, we shouldn't be commenting, we shouldn't have an opinion because we're blinkered... To the... Well, you know, I think history's a very good guide as to where all this actually goes. You mm. look at Zimbabwe as it was, Rhodesia, yeah, yeah. prior to Robert Mugabe's uprising. Mm. There was white privilege there. It was in the law. Mm. Change of government, change of law. There ain't no white privilege now for the few hey, farmers that are left. So Michael, it depends who's in control as you, to who has a bit of a better run. Do you remember when there was this, this conversation a couple of years ago about... The, the attacks on white South African farmers, and yes. they were sanctioned by um, constitutional change yes. in South Africa. Yes. And as soon as Peter Dutton raised it and said, well, maybe, you know, we should consider... I, well, I think it was Peter Dutton. Yes. Maybe we should consider allowing them an, an, a visa program to access our the safety of our shores. Well, they were poo-pooed and said, no, that's not necessary. They're white people. They can be all right. And this is racism, mm. straight out. And the well, of course the it is racism, but why have we suddenly uh, gone offshore with this conversation so quickly? I think it's because we're deflecting. I think it's because well, there's no, a I think resistance it's to acknowledging I that, that there are actually some institutional issues of racism and sexism and, in this country. And, and, it's and, not. and I think that Catherine, you spoke so eloquently, and I don't disagree with anything about the tribalism that you and Corey have both spoken to. But in your answer, would you not also acknowledge, as you have uh, said, that yeah. there is such a thing as and look, privilege? And I, and I do get... You know, sometimes, when, dis despite the fact that I've fallen out very, very conspicuously with the, the organised queer community and its most high-profile spokespeople, the simple fact is gay men were being murdered in Sydney during my lifetime. Mm. That's just the simple fact of it. There was brutality... Uh, and discrimination until very re re recently. You know, the original 78ers from that Mardi Gras are in a different cohort. Where I do get angry, though, is, is, is one point Corey made. People bang on about white male privilege as though it's this uniform uh, sort of block. If you're a guy, you know, some battling tradie in Campbelltown, have you got white male privilege compared to Gillian mm. Triggs? Of course you haven't. And the other thing that annoys me when I hear the argument about if you say this about anyone from the rainbow community, they'll commit suicide. Yet the highest incidence almost of suicide is amongst mature age males. They're at great risk. And yet no one ever says you've got to censor remarks about blokes because they might kill themselves. Well, and, and a lot of those are white males, apparently with privilege, living on farms. Who, who are struggling and, and they're suicidal. Can and, I posit this question? Please. In a, in a society where the green left tell us that gender doesn't matter, mm. why is it all of a sudden it's OK to condemn or criticise someone because they're male on the basis of their gender. They're, they're, they've led a charge, quite rightly, that, that um, in the past that race or creed or colour doesn't matter and now they're using it as a way of attacking and criticising and shutting up other people. And uh, if that boot was on the other foot and we started talking about uh, this privilege or that privilege according to race or gender there would be outcry. Well, it's obviously nonsensical to say that gender doesn't matter or that race doesn't matter. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not from the green left community, so I'm not their appointed spokesperson. I'm not. I'm simply saying that it's, it's, you can have two conversations at once. You can say that, yes, there are white men that are struggling in this country with all sorts of social and mental yeah. health issues. Absolutely. As a mother of two young boys, I'd be the first in line to argue that. Yeah. I just don't think that that conversation has to come at the expense of the conversation, that we also are seeing women still being killed in alarmingly high numbers, that we do have gender disparity through domestic violence, that we don't see proper but representation of women, okay. that the gender gap is real. Why can't we have both of these conversations You're opening a massive once? can of worms. And, you know, what we don't have conversations about domestic violence where it's epidemic levels or Indigenous substance abuse in Indigenous communities because of the race issue. It is doesn't suit the leftist narrative. I am happy to have that conversation. I don't think it's fair to put all of us that stand up and say, hey, I think that there are some social inequities in our society that we should acknowledge, we're not necessarily saying uh, that all conversations should be shut down. Well, just a, a quick question to wrap up. Is there less white male privilege today in Australia than there was in the 1960s, 1950s, 1940s? Yes. In other words, are we heading in the yes. right direction? Yes. I think unquestionably the answer is I yes. Believe. And I think that's why there's so much friction over this, yes. is that when you have a changing of an order, mm. when, when there's social change is unsettling people... It does become... Hang on. Are we heading in the right direction? I think we have gone far too far in this whole identity and culture wars. 